Okay, part two. Dooby dooby doo. So, um, yes. So now, um, we're in New York. you're now in New York, but you know, Marco, I really would like to know because I was like you in Japan and did kendo, and we have many things in common, as you just mentioned. We met in in Japan in Ibaragi by chance, and um, now we are in New York meeting each, each other again. I mean, actually, three years ago. Um, so, what I think many people would like to know you as a Swiss white boy going to Japan, going through the all the hardship to study something which is really out of your culture um, for 18 years, right? So how do you feel now, being here in New York, looking back, uh, would you recommend other Swiss or whoever? Or any other... Go and do the same hardship, go through the same well, probably hardship? I don't know if it's possible anymore because, you know, on the Kozao Kodo and like, I don't think there are any groups that do what we used to do anymore. I guess time have changed, so this evolved. Times have evolved, so people do maybe a little different. I mean, it might still be possible to do something similar, but I think, uh, I, I don't know if I would do a second time, but I sort of, it was interesting the first time because I just, you know, it was a process. But when I went to Japan, I, I guess Shakuachi was really like what took me and but I, I didn't even think at that time it's something Japanese or it, it was it was like the culture thing. It's just something I was very passionate about uh, an instrument. And but I, it was always sort of made from the beginning. There's always that thing about in Japan that they always tell you you know you're you always you might be really good at it, but you'll always some well, some someone will always tell you you're good, but you're not Japanese. I mean, I was told by my di the director uh, and other people, you know, even you can be there 20, 30, 40 years, there uh, always be that time where the, somebody will sort of crash your castle and will tell you, yeah, you're good, but you're not Japanese. <laughs> and that's sort of like the, one of the bad side of Japanese culture, I guess, you know, where they they don't recognize. And do you think they're right? I Even don't think now, they're right, no, I don't I think we have evolved and I think a lot of Japanese actually don't understand their own culture anymore. I mean, by, that's where they live, but they don't really understand. I mean, probably like in Switzerland, I don't really understand Yodel or, you know, a lot of the Swiss music and probably don't appreciate it. And so it's the same thing. I mean, they're very proficient Japanese salsa dancers and tango dancers that might know more. It's a, a time of global, you know, like the world has gotten almost smaller. I mean, nobody says, you know, Yo-Yo Ma comes from a Chinese-American background, so what does he understand about German music or Italian, you know, Baroque music or Bach German? There's no link. I mean, it's the same thing in a way. Or Seiji Ozawa, you know, director, how could he understand really deep down what real European music... I could say the same thing about, you know, all these Japanese classical music. I say, well, it's good music, but you're not European. So, I mean, it's the same thing if I said that to them. And, uh, you know, it's sort of ridiculous in a way. They probably mean understand more, you know, in, in the way and it can be led to interpretation, so. But, uh, again, in Japan, I think, uh, I mean, it was a great experience for me and uh, it was at time very tough, frustrating, of course. Uh, the, the group went through different, um, crisis where some members left so it became sort of we were a smaller group and it was harder to sort of sustain and you just had to keep on you know practicing on your own sometimes you have to do just very few and it's always better when you have like 10 20 people you know practicing together it's it's sort of easier you know when you get really into hardship then it becomes hard when you're on your own to sort of keep on practicing or running running was a big part of our training so you will feel like, okay, today I'm not gonna run. But when then, you know, somebody tells you, you have to run 20 miles today, so you do that. And then that becomes part of your training. But at times you need some people to sort of, you know, push you. And so with that, within the group, that was possible. You know, on my own, I don't know if I, I would have been able to do all that, obviously. So, so what did, uh, 
uh, did you learn as a human being, as a man, from Japan and your Jap Japan, uh, Japanese life, which what you couldn't get from European culture? Well, I mean, it would be hard to tell because I, I didn't really have two parallel lives, but where, you know, it was hard to compare. I went up to high school in Switzerland, so from what I learned, it's a little different culture than in the US, for example, uh, school also. But in Europe, you sort of have more, um, they encourage sort of questioning things, you know, why is that occurring or questioning the teacher, uh, encouraging people to ask questions. But in Japan, none of that. You know, the students are not really encouraged to ask questions, you just listen. Even if the teacher is wrong, then you don't question the teacher. <laughs> I mean, that was sort of a joke among the, when we were talking to English, you know, teachers that were sort of sub-teachers in schools, that they were not supposed to correct the Japanese English teacher, not to make him lose face in front of a student. So it's like, uh, to that level, it's a little different, you know, in um, learning. But, but so, like, for 10 years, that's what I was subjected to, where you just listen to and you assimilate, trying to understand what's really being said, and nothing really is being told in, in clear words. You know, it's sometimes symbolical, or they give you sample examples of other things. Like, Mr. Den would give us lectures for eight hours. He would read about a book, and we were not allowed to eat in between. And he would talk to something that had obviously, no, I mean, it seemed like no link to to the music. He would talk about baseball or some other thing, but to him, it was it always had a, a link to to the you know to the way of living, how to 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 to, have, to carry your life, and to, for example, there, there was a lot of talk about being on stage as an actor or as a performer and sort of to have being like an iceberg so you have to have your life being really clean and pure and sort of like you know work a lot practice a lot and the audience just sees a tip but if you there's a saying if you don't practice for a day you can tell yourself that two days you know the audience and three days away so there's always this thing behind you that sort of pushes and encourages you to practice and to keep on practicing and not like giving up for a, a while so I think that was part of the, the teaching that I got mostly from the different teachers. So when I was influenced also by the Shakuachi teacher, so that I had also a little different aspect from that. And also I was uh, usually staying with a Tsugaru Shamisen teacher, sort of 70-year-old lady from Aomori who went through her childhood. She was uh, actually not living with her parents, she was sort of given away to to wandering uh, musicians and she would go from town to town so I, I got to talk with her and really talk about how musicians were treated in the past and especially as a woman you know and so it was very interesting to learn about uh, about that background and I'm sure a lot of Japanese don't even know about it and don't understand but it seems there's a lot of sous entendre in Japan where things are not said they expect you to to be in a certain way even without being told what to do and you sort of are expected to do the things. Okay, let's go into specifics now, musically also. Yeah. What's the difference of Japanese music and the music you learned in, in Switzerland, basically? Uh, well, Western music, Western because they do music, Western yeah, music okay. in Japan too. Well, I would say basically... Is it Ma? Or? Well, mostly, yes. There's no... First, there's no music. There's no written music, and of course, I mean, we do eventually write something, but then there's no, no tempo really. There's no way to tell you, you know, how long, how long you you're supposed to wait between, you know, two movements, or sometimes there's a, a little segment where you're not supposed to, to play. So that is considered yeah ma, and I guess just by practicing over and over and playing with the teacher, that's how little by little you sort of get a feeling of what it is. And so most of the teaching is hearing something and then try to re replicate, replicate, duplicate yes. whatever is being done and just going over and over and over and sort of almost the body little by little also starts remembering that sort of a feeling. So it's just you, in, 
sort of a, you feel like a sponge and you get like all that music inside instead of uh, intellectually understanding it and reading and then but I found that when you do it that way you sort of memorize it for a longer time it stays with you for longer if you read the music try to memorize from the paper it stays for a while but after a couple of years if you don't play it doesn't really stay but the other way even if you don't play a song for long, it sort of comes back it's a longer process but yes it stays a little longer good um, uh, let's go back to New York what was again your decision to, to leave on the Goza and well, come we, to New I York? I had been with the group for 18 years the director was having uh, health problems he had uh, diabetes and he was trying to get a little uh, his you know, mind getting a little cuckoo I mean easily angry or and there were other issues which I can't really talk about but so that it always comes at a point where you know you start to make a decision to to part I mean it gets more difficult I, I was sort of leading and at points he would sort of pull everything back saying no I don't want to do this tour and that gets very frustrating at times because you're trying to make the, the group more successful or at least to guarantee a future where you get touring and you can do things like it was 20 years ago where you said next month we're going to Canada on tour or whatever and try to make things happen so he didn't really understand he liked to be sort of spontaneous but that didn't happen anymore so as I had done for 18 years I, have, I felt like I was directing almost a group I felt like maybe I can do that on my own and also I, I met my partner that uh, I've been living uh, for now for 20 years and he was living in New York so um, he was on tour though and so at that time I decided well New York would be a perfect place plus we had just finished a tour of the US running around the US and I thought well I, I know I had some connection with some musicians in the taiko world and so it would be easier to sort of work uh, with the people. I mean, though New York didn't have much taiko at that time. Okay. And um, so first I just moved here. I didn't really know what I was going to do. I was going to keep on doing the shakuhachi, trying to find things. And uh, little by little I started to get some drums because it felt like having played 18 years drums, I really sort of started missing it. It was just almost like being on drugs and getting off the drugs and then suddenly being craving it so I needed to do taiko and uh, so I got some drums I started also teaching and little by little performance came about and uh, that's how I sort of started and then I, eventually I had to have a not-for-profit to make it things to to make it easier to to move to get uh, some grants from the city so I was able to to do that with uh, an organization called uh, lawyers for the arts that that helped sort of um, with the, the process of not-for-profit not uh, <coughs> organizations I was able to incorporate and then so that was very helpful and so then I was able to, to do more performances and start inviting I also organized some tours of Tsugaru Shamisen and some uh, dancers and taiko to be able to tour the US with that organization so I'm still trying to use that organization to not just to our performances which is Taikoza which is a, a Japanese Taiko group but based in New York so it's my version of sort of Ondekoza I, I think it's been very greatly influenced by uh, the group I was with before visually and not using just the Taiko all the time but sort of making more sort of a, a variety of music and also adding dances to make it sort of more like a a musical sort of uh, experience and not just taiko. Taiko sort of loses its power if it's just played for an hour one song after the other. And then also I created another group which is sort of more like a chamber ensemble, more like a shakwachi and koto or sometimes shakwachi and piano or <clears throat> so, so smaller ensemble which was easier to move around and to do things. So we've done uh, with both groups we've toured around what different the name countries. Of that East Winds yeah. Ensemble. So my company is East Wind Inc. That was sort of a, an umbrella sort of financial organization and East Winds Ensemble is the organization, the, the group I perform with as well as the type of Good. 